Hi, I'm Saben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Evaluating the Test Result of a 5000 to 1 High Voltage Probe. This is a follow up on a discussion in a LinkedIn group. Here is the link to the group, and here's the link to the conversation, to the thread. And the discussion was related to the design and construction and testing of a probe that was done by Marcin Chestner. He had designed the probe, built it, tested it, and shared the results. This presentation is evaluating the result just to understand what's going on. So here is the probe, the demo probe, experimental unit. We have here, this is the probe, this is a close-up here. And what it is, is basically a chain of 101 megaohm resistors, two branches, and they are loaded in this experiment by 20 kilo ohm. So this is a divider. There is actually, this is an, a preparation for a differential probe, although some of the experiments or the experiments shown here are done single-ended. And we have here the board, this is uh, the two inputs, this is the output, here is the generator, function generator to feed it, and here is the scope which can also do the transfer function as a function of uh, frequency. So this is the experimental unit looking close at the actual layout of the PCB, here it is. We see here the resistors, each one of these is uh, one megaohm and uh, there are a hundred of these on each branch and here there is a preparation for a capacitor that was not mounted. So the first experiment was feeding generator uh, 6 volt to this probe and looking here at the 20 kilo ohm load at the output with an oscilloscope and uh, actually deriving the transfer function as a function of uh, frequency. So basically we have this circuit. We have a 100 megaohm here, 100 megaohm here. These are two single-ended, so basically we have a branch here in between these two grounds. And if we assume that uh, here we have 100 uh, megaohm and 20 kilo ohm, then the attenuation is 1 to 5,000, which is minus 74 dB, approximately 70, minus 74 dB. So this would be the attenuation here. Now, if we assume that each of the 100 uh, resistors uh, has a capacitance of, say, 1 picofarad, then the breakpoint is 160 kilohertz, which is quite a bit if it is so. This is just a marker, it doesn't have any particular meaning uh, to it except just to get a feeling of where we are. So here are the results, and since this is pale, I've sort of retraced it, here it is. So here we see the gain, starting at uh, minus 74 as expected, at low frequency, and the phase, this is the phase here, starting at zero degrees, because this is a resistive divider, and then it goes kind of very strange. The gain goes uh, down, that is uh, more attenuation, and then it goes in fact up to a higher level. And on the other hand, the phase, again, there is a lag here, and there is an advance here, and then it goes back to a lag. So this is a rather complex uh, waveform. Uh, it looks as if there is some resonance, but there is not, because the circuit we have is an RC circuit, it's kind of complex. I'm trying to show how complex it is because uh, if we consider the whole situation, we have the resistors, we have the capacitance of each the resistor, we have capacitance to ground on each branch, we have now also capacitances between the upper branch to the lower branch, so it is really complex here, and I'm not showing here capacitances paths between, say, this point and this point, which could be, of course, the case. So this is a rather complex uh, network, and uh, to do a proper analysis, probably it'll take a uh, PhD thesis. So the purpose here is really to get an understanding how come we can get this type of a behavior, okay? So to understand that this behavior could be due to RC network, let's uh, sort of lump the, these units together 
and we get up something of this nature which kind of reminds us of a RC filter like a notch filter which we know can give us a peaking at a given frequency if uh, we, here we have an advance and a delay and high frequency low frequency component and we know that this uh, network is uh, giving us uh, sort of uh, peaks uh, that uh, are actually used for filtering. So it's not surprising that we are getting a very complex unit with that many interconnection between the resistors. So in order to simplify the situation, there's another test that was done. First of all, we have cut out the lower branch here. So this branch does not contribute actually to the operation. In fact, it's just complicating matters. And also, there was a sheet that was put underneath the board so as to separate it from the table. And this sheet was floating, so it's uh, not connected here uh, to the ground, okay? So it's a floating shield. And here it shows uh, sort of a schematically uh, the situation now. Again, it's very simplified because I'm not showing other paths and other parasitic uh, capacitances. We have the major divider. These are the 100 resistors. We have each resistor has some capacitance, then we have capacitance to the shield, and of course there will be some capacitance between the shield and ground. And here is the excitation. Now in this experiment, a 1.5 nanofarad was connected to the resistor uh, in parallel to the load, and um, again fed from a function generator. Now the breakpoint of the output here, of the load here, being 20 kilo ohm and um, 1.5 nanofront comes up to be something like uh, 5 kilohertz. And here are the results. Again, since this is pale, I've sort of traced it. And here it is. Now the gain here starts again about minus 74 and then it goes down a little bit and then it goes up maintains sort of a constant value and then it drops down it is interesting that the phase starts with zero which we would expect because this is a resistive divider but then it goes back to zero after sort of a small hump here back to zero this would suggest that in this configuration now we have two regions one is a resistive divider. Here it is. So we have zero phase shift because it's resistive. And then apparently here we have a capacitive divider, which uh, again will not have a perpetual or should not have any phase shift. So this could explain the situation. This sort of uh, reminds us of this, for example, this example of a oscilloscope that has a input resistance of 1 mega ohm, 20 picofarad capacitance, and when we connect a probe like a divide by 10, this would be 9 mega ohm, but then we need a capacitor for compensation because we'll get a flat response between input and output when the time constant here are the same. This is why we have a little screw there to adjust this uh, capacitor so as to get uh, the time constant right, and then we're going to get a flat response. So here it's apparently something similar. At low frequency we get this resistor, at high frequency we get this capacitor, and since the time constant are just about the same apparently, then we get um, sort of a almost a flat response. Now if we look at it sort of break it into the two parts, then it turns out that uh, if indeed we have 20 kilo ohm and 100 mega ohm here, 1.5 nanofarad here, then the equivalent uh, capacitance, that's not the real capacitance, this is the overall capacitance, is apparently something like 0.3 picofarad, which kind of makes sense, okay? So at high frequency, we basically have a capacitive divider rather than a resistive divider. So here we have a resistive 
division. Here we have capacitance and the phase goes like this. So this would be my explanation to this rather strange behavior here. Now to sort of get a feeling of it, I've set up an LT spice model. Here we have chains of resistors and we have 10 of them. Each one has 10 resistors, so it's an overall of 100 resistors. Input is here, output is here. These are connected, of course, here this, this connection. Uh, I mean, this is to here, this is to here, etc. Then it goes all the way here. And here we can see it. We have a resistor, a capacitor across it, and then a capacitor to the shield, okay? Now the shield, uh, could be grounded by here, it's a one farad capacitor for AC, it's like grounded, or uh, it could be put, it uh, could be a capacitance, which is the realistic case, because between the shield and ground, obviously there is some parasitic capacitance. So these uh, capacitances, the uh, sort of the capacitor of the resistor and to the ground are power metric, so they can be changed. First of all, I've made them zero. Uh, this is fem to amp, 10 to the minus 15, and then I've actually added more, uh, making it even smaller. So basically we have no capacitor here. We have no capacitors here. All these parameters are uh, in fact zero. This is like zero. And um, what we get is what we would expect. This is now purely resistive. We have about 74, minus 74 dB attenuation. And then we have a phase shift that starts, but no, notice these are very small uh, values here. These are micro degrees. So uh, the breakpoint is probably at very high frequency, which is kind of makes sense. This is 10 megahertz here. So basically we have a flat response as we would es expect for a resistive network. Now, I've done some tweaking and tuning and try to match the response of this circuit to the response that we have seen in the actual experiment, the actual test. The values that I came up with are of course of no consequences in terms of the realistic value, but they are just meant to show that a circuit like that with capacitors and resistor can produce the waveform that we have seen in the experiment. So by sort of tuning this thing a little bit, I came up with these values for the uh, capacitor across the resistance to ground and this capacitance between the shield and ground. And here is what I got. Here is the gain. Start with uh, low frequency again, it's resistive. There is a notch here and then the phase concurrently uh, sort of goes up a little bit and then it sort of goes, tapers down back to about zero. So it starts with zero and then goes back to zero. So now let's compare these two. And you can see that they are very, very close. Uh, we have this behavior here. And again, this notch could be due to the uh, interaction of the capacitor and the resistors. And then we have in this region, we have sort of a resistive divider and here we have a capacitive divider so this is why we have a, a zero phase shift here and also a zero phase, shi phase shift here so as we can see this uh, parasitic capacitances can indeed explain what we are seeing in the actual measurement in this case so what are the observations here first of all we are realize that parasitic capacitances play a major role in the performance of a high voltage probe. Uh, the divider really will suffer a lot from parasitic uh, capacitances. And then I think that a single through hole high resistance resistor may be a better choice rather than having many small SMD resistors because a single resistor will have say one capacitance so overall capacitance to the surrounding and in between the terminal, which you can then compensate by adding capacitor to the circuit. So this is the end of this presentation. 
I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.